Nikola's hydrogen master plan just got a whole lot more interesting. After having demoed both its battery electric and hydrogen fuel cell trucks at the largest automotive electrification conference in North America, the ACT Expo, Nikola has partnered with some of the biggest infrastructure solutions providers in North America by the name of Watt EV and Volterra to catalyze its hydrogen and electric production. I'm sure you guys know already the deal with battery electric semi trucks. They provide a fantastic value proposition and something like the Nikola tray provides a great range at a reasonable cost if you include incentives. And Nikola itself has done a great job of partnering with the right incentive providers and the right dealer network to create a good customer experience for those investing and taking a charge on a new technology. But Obviously, the biggest hurdle with electrification of semi-trucks is the infrastructure problem. As much of fun is made for hydrogen, electric charging solutions for multi-hundred kilowatt and even megawatt scale is simply non-existent in the electric grid. And in many cases, fleets have to invest in their own charging infrastructure instead of rely on public fleets to be able to use these electric trucks in the first place. And well, with Nikola having the early mover advantage, as well as a very smart two-pronged strategy for a hydrogen and an electric platform, these guys seem to be figuring out this problem way faster than most of the competition from Peterbilt, Kenworth, and in this case, potentially even Toyota. In this video, I want to understand what Watt EV and Volterra's recent partnership announcements with Nikola mean. What is it going to realistically take for this company to sell more of its electric semi trucks? And also, what we'll learn from the recent ACT Expo and how Nikola's trucks fit into the overall clean energy ecosystem. But as usual, guys, before we get into it, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. So how about we start with the elephant in the room, which is the ACT Expo, which just took place in Anaheim, California, and is undoubtedly the biggest clean transportation exposition across the entire country. And this is obviously a pretty big deal because we are seeing innovation at a rapid space, not only in electrification solutions, but hydrogen, charging infrastructure, and in this case, commercial and industrial adoption. And let's be completely honest here, as somebody who is a big proponent for reducing emissions, this is a pretty big deal. Despite us being in a recession and seeing the bubble of 2020 and 2021 having popped right in front of our eyes, innovation and entrepreneurship is still well and alive in this space. And obviously Nikola Motors is one of the companies leading the charge right now. And at least from the footage, reviews, and interviews that I have seen, Nicola's showcase stole the eyes of most of the presenters and attendees of this exposition. And like I've said countless times, that is for good reason. Because right now, Nicola is one of the only purpose-built OEMs in America that is building trucks using a factory in the country, with partners that are working with state and local governments, and with a product lineup of both a hydrogen and a fuel cell platform. In terms of the demos that are available, Nikola happened to be the only one with two trucks on the line, with customers able to experience both the hydrogen and the battery electric tray, which as we already know is on the market. And certainly a big reason for the renewed interest in such a technology was that there was a lot more OEMs competing and investing in this space than many people initially thought. Hyundai, Hylion, GM, and even Toyota were launching new fuel cell electric powertrains in this ACT Expo and demonstrated new prototypes and platforms on how they plan to invest in this innovative space. A lot of new announcements were actually made at this clean truck expo, which highlighted the insane developments we're going to see in green hydrogen and fuel cell technology for the long haul and heavy duty industry. And that itself sheds light on the work that somebody like Nikola has been doing, which has obviously been rapidly investing in hydrogen ecosystem partners, supply chain and technology to be able to bring down the cost. And this right here is where the fun really starts. Just recently, we learned that Packard and Toyota 
are going to expand their hydrogen fuel cell truck collaboration to include commercialization of the latest Kenworth T680 truck. And this certainly caught a lot of eyes for a very good reason. Because Toyota, back in March, was actually ordered by the California state to only sell its hydrogen fuel cell powertrains in the state if they applied for the CARB executive voucher, which always see is an incentive program in the state for zero emission technologies. And now after all the demos that Toyota did with the Kenworth 579 and T680s over the past five years, they're going to actually start commercializing fuel cell trucks through a pilot program with the DT680. Production of these vehicles is expected to happen in 2024 with modules being manufactured at the end of this year. It seems like to me that stakeholders and governments are clearly understanding the important role hydrogen will play in the future of the zero emissions race. And right now, Toyota, Nikola, and a select few automakers like Hyundai are the only key players right now. And well, if you pair that with the fact that for Nikola, they've been selling their battery electric trucks on the market for about one year now, and the reviews for their powertrain so far have been quite good, especially from the drive arounds at the ACT Expo, it seems like everything is going quite great from a product standpoint. Well, obviously the elephant in the room for both hydrogen and electric is the infrastructure bottleneck. And just last week, Nikola announced some rather important progress. Namely, one of the only logistics companies in the United States that runs a purely zero emissions fleet took orders of around 15 Nikola Tray battery electric vehicles in California. And at least from the research that I've done, Watt EB isn't just a shell company that is making all these absurd claims. They have actually built real charging networks in California and plan to do around 12,000 by 2030 in their new trucking as a service business model. This model is basically just like it sounds where you can rent or buy a truck from a service provider like Watt EV and charge it at their own infrastructure providers and partners that can allow you to get cheaper rates and in some cases more incentives to buy an electric truck. As a matter of fact, after having built around three public charging stations for heavy duty trucks in California, Watt EV is planning to open the largest heavy duty truck charging depot in the entire country at the port of Long Beach just this month. Watt EV has actually developed a very unique charging dispenser technology with the help of Charge America that can allow for 360 kilowatt charging of multiple trucks at the same time and potentially even megawatt charging in a compact, safe, and practical form factor. Whether this becomes a cost-effective solution for fleets, we still have to see. But at least from a technological and conceptual standpoint, this is certainly in the right direction for electrification of commercial applications. And it seems like to me right now, Nikola is at the forefront of this with their partnership with Watt EV. And as for the hydrogen side of things, Nikola also happened to announce a new partnership with a company called Volterra that will site, build, and own 50 hydrogen refueling stations in the country by 2026. You guys might be wondering what role will Nikola have in this specific partnership because obviously they've been talking about this happening for the past couple of years. But in this case, it seems like there seems to be material agreements between the two businesses on how this will take place because obviously their fuel cell trucks are coming on the road in the third quarter of just this year. Because this time around, a company like Volterra is actually backed by one of the largest private equity firms in the world by the name of EQT. In this case, Volterra is essentially their way of investing in charging infrastructure at scale within North America right now, because obviously it's been very difficult for companies, fleets, and OEMs to invest in their own infrastructure, which has bottlenecked adoption of clean transportation. And as a matter of fact, with the help of Volterra's Edgecon X backing, which is one of the world's biggest IT firms, Volterra will plan to site, build, and own and operate 
these strategically located fit for purpose hydrogen refueling stations, whereas Nikola will actually supply the hydrogen fuel and provide technical support and expertise through their fuel cell program. And at least from a strategic point of view, this as a matter of fact falls right into the plan Nikola laid out last year, where their energy supply and trading company will act as a medium between production and dispensing, where the dispensing will happen with strategic and financial partners, which in this case Volterra is perfectly fit to do so. Whereas on the left side for production, their production will happen from Wabash Valley Resources, their H2 hub in Arizona, and partners like TC Energy that plan to produce blue and in some cases gray hydrogen to catalyze and get off the ground with fuel cell demand. Whether this plan will successfully work, that's for you to decide for yourself. But it's safe to say that Nikola and others in the space are making some really valuable progress in the advancement of hydrogen and clean technologies, and we have just seen the very start of this massive revolution. As usual, folks, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.